Hey guys, Chris again from ClassicVWBugs.com and in this video we're going to talk about semaphores. Now out of the factory, semaphores did not blink. They just lit up. So I'm going to show you how to do this. Now there's a lot of forums online that show you how to make these blink, but in the past uh, you used to have to add multiple flashers behind your dashboard, some extra wires, and um, you know it, it was complicated and it made things a little more problematic sometimes. But new technology these days has uh, made it simpler. But as you can see, this is an old ad, and uh, the dealerships actually used to have some third-party units that you could have added to your car back in the day. But it's a little complicated to set up. But let me show you the easy way to do this. Here's an original style type bulb that goes into a semaphore. Almost looks like a dome light bulb. And I found these on eBay with a guy in Australia that made these LED semaphore bulbs and they're 6 volt. And they're about the same size as the original style bulb. So as you can see, this is what we are going to replace to make our semaphores flash. So first we want to disconnect the semaphores. This is the ribbed style semaphores. So basically up until about 53, they had these ribbed or grooved style semaphores on your early Beatles. So what we want to do uh, is first disconnect this. Later Beatles had smooth semaphores on the uh, outside. So you want to get this flathead screw that's in there and uh, take that off and pull the semaphore out. Usually got to drop it down a little bit to unhook it and slide it out. Now there's two wires hooked up to the semaphore. As you can see here, you're going to want to undo those. A little flathead screwdriver will do. The blue goes usually to the top because that lights up the bulb, and then the black and white or black and green is to the bottom. And here's our semaphore. The bulb is right there, usually in the front, and there's a bulb holder that holds it in place. These early semaphores have a nut on the bottom and two screws up on top that hold everything in place. You're going to want to undo those. The later style just has one screw or two screws on the bottom to hold everything together. Take this top piece off. You'll take the bulb holder out, the lens will come apart, and you'll see how this is all put together. There's the bulb that falls out that we're we going to replace. Now again, this is aftermarket stuff, so they're, you know, we're always very skeptical with some aftermarket things. We're just trying this out for the first time here. Uh, usually aftermarket stuff just does not fit right. So, But uh, here we go. Let's give it a shot. Why are we doing this? Because usually semaphores, when you're driving on today's roads and those things fly out that you're making a, a turn, people do not know what they are. So we need them to blink. So there, I set it in there. You want to set it up, and then you get the brass holder to hold that in place. A little hold down piece. Make sure you bring your wire around. That's got to tuck into the bottom of the lens. Sometimes it can be kind of finicky. I almost feel like I need like a, an extra set of hands here to help out, but you got to pull up the semaphore from the unit and that's got to go below the brass piece on this particular model. All right, and you got to make sure you line up your holes, hold the bulb in place. There's my holes. And make sure it's all together correctly so I put the top piece on afterwards and everything's got to line up with the screws and the nuts. Now here's where we ran into a problem with this bulb. The holes do not line up on this particular model semaphore. When we pull back to line up the holes you'll see that the brass piece holding the bulb in the front moves upward and above the lens now I can't get the top on it. So we ran into a little bit of a snag there, and when we looked closely, the bulb, the aftermarket bulb, the flasher bulb, is actually a little bit too tall. Just a little bit longer than it's supposed to be. Late model semaphores, it might work okay. I have not tried it yet. This is for earlier semaphores I, you know, I picked these up for, but you might run into the same issue. So if you do, you just got to make a little modification, and we're just going to drill a new hole into the brass hole down. So please use gloves. This is my dad doing this, and he is a tough guy and uh, feels like he does not need to use his gloves or whatnot. So see, right then and there, something could have snagged and cut him, and you know how it is. Old school. What am I, I going to do? <laughs> 
So anyways, we drilled the hole through. And uh, now we can put the holder back into place with the new holes, line it up, put the top on, and bang, line up, get your poker, line up the holes, and it's good. Tighten down the screws, and we are ready to install back into the car. There you go, how pretty. All right, so connect your wires. Now, usually these little wires can be kind of finicky when it comes to installing it back into the car. You know, it's sometimes those wires got to get tucked in first, and then you need them to get out of the way when you're going to bolt it down to the body. Now, there's a hook here on all these semaphores that has to hook into the back part when you insert it, so make sure you hook that. You should hook it in a way and then give the semaphore a little tug and make sure you're connected. Now, this is adjustable when, once you start screwing it down. So you got to make sure the semaphore is placed in a nice center position in the opening on the body. So you usually do a dry run, do a test fit, and make sure it's smooth and everything lines up. Once you find the correct position, tighten it down. Check it out one more time. And there we go. It's not sticking out too far. It's not rubbing on the top. Not rubbing on the bottom. And uh, we are ready to test this out now. So here we go. Moment of truth. It's our first time checking this out. And boom. Holy cow. Look at that. Beautiful thing. Now my semaphore is flash. And I don't need any extra wires or any crazy hookup. So got any questions? Chris at ClassicVWBugs.com. Uh -huh.